Our hard drives are all installed, and it's time for step five, booting our Unraid server for the first time. Before the server boots, why don't you go into your BIOS and disable all other boot devices other than the USB. Make sure the USB is set as a boot device, and then you're going to be able to boot your Unraid flash drive. But the reason that we uh, disable booting from hard drives, CD-ROM, things like that, is so that if there are boot images uh, currently on those drives, they're not going to uh, supersede the USB flash drive. It's always going to boot from that USB drive. We don't need to boot from the hard drives ever, so in this case, it's safe to just disable those altogether. Once that's done, save your BIOS settings and reboot your computer. Unraid is going to load up. It'll take a few minutes, and uh, that's going to just configure everything up, get it up and running, make sure your computer's network connected, and that's going to automatically assign an IP address from your router or DHCP server, and that's going to allow us to connect in in just a few moments to our Unraid device through our web browser on another computer on our network. Once Unraid server is fully loaded from your USB flash drive, it's going to be sitting at a login prompt, at which point you can sit down on one of your computers on the network and bring up your browser because it's time for step six, building your first array. Because Unraid uses a web platform, we're able to access it from any kind of computer. You can see I'm using Ubuntu Linux here. You can use Mac, you can use Windows, you can use anything with a web browser you're going to be able to get on and configure this device as long as you're in the internal network. So all we want to do is go to http colon slash slash tower and that's going to give us access to the uh, Unraid panel and we're going to be able to start configuring our array. You'll see when Unraid first loads that there are no hard drives that are listed here and of course because of that there are completely stopped. There's no devices. So what we need to do is get into our devices tab and start setting up those devices Using the free version of Unraid, you'll see that there are, uh, there's an option for th up to three drives. So we've got our parity drive first, and we want to set that again as our largest drive. You can see that the uh, number between ATA dash and then the serial number at the end there, uh, ST3750630AS, that's the model of my hard drive. So if I'm not too sure, you know, if you've got six drives in there, it might get confusing because they all look pretty similar. Just get onto your favorite search engine and search for that string and find out uh, which drive is which, or you can also look at the physical face of the drive to find out the model. We need to make absolutely certain that we're selecting the right drive, otherwise we're going to have data loss. So I'm going to select my 750 gig drive as the uh, parity device, because that's my largest drive. And then for disk one, I'm just going to be using a 160 gig drive uh, in this case, because I want to be able to show you how to grow the array in just a few minutes. So now I've selected that device, and as it says at the bottom, changes take effect immediately. So now those devices are set up. I've got a parity drive of 750 gigs, and a disk one of 160 gigs. Now that that's all set up, we can jump back to main, and we can start initializing that, uh, that device. So what we need to do is just click start. Remember that this is going to clear any data that's on those drives, most likely can, uh, case scenario. Uh, so if you have any data on those drives, it's very important, again, that you back up that data before you initi initialize this array. Everything that's on those drives is now going to be lost. So make a backup or just use an empty drive. Now you can see that one of my drives is showing as unformatted. Now it was formatted at ext3, but because Unraid uses Reaser FS, it needs to reformat that drive. Again, that's going to lose all the data on the drive. Uh, I'm okay with that because I've backed it up elsewhere. So I'm going to click Format. That's going to prep that drive for me and get ready to uh, include that in the array. But first, the parity drive has to go through a parity synchronization. This could take about four hours in my case with a 750 gig parity drive. So I'm going to walk away for a while and uh, come back to that in about four or five hours. All right, coming back after the parity synchronization is complete, I notice one thing, that my two drives are flashing green. What does that mean? Well, they're green, so that's good, right? Uh, definitely, it means that both drives are good, but the fact that they're flashing means that they've been spun down. Unraid has detected that the drives have remained idle for more than an hour, which is the default, and so it's spun down the drives. So just for the sake of the demonstration, even though this is not a necessary step because Unraid is going to automatically spin up those drives when they're needed, I'll just show you that it's as easy as pushing the spin up button in order to get those drives to spin back up.